Today we have the honor to receive for an interview Dr. Dave Tarnishnivil, Vice Rector from Ilya State University. I also would like to use this opportunity to thank our colleague, Dr. Katvan Kukapadazi, that has organized our meeting and also the team from the university who has intermediated our conversation. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Well, I just, uh, for a correct spelling, my name is written as uh, Tarhnishvili, yeah, and uh, Keti Kupatadze. So it's like, uh -huh. but uh, I understand that this Georgian names are a challenge. So it's like, and I'm not uh, actually a vice rector, but I am a uh, advisor of the rector in questions of science. Uh, and a director of the Institute of Ecology at the university. Thank you, Professor. I'm sorry for these uh, mistakes. No and uh, the Georgian names are really difficult to speak in Portuguese. I just know. I know. <laughs> yes. mm -hmm. And I need assistance. It's very, it's true. Mm -hmm. So, continuing, I now will read some rules and disclosures for our meeting to ensure equal opportunities to all our partners. First rule, our interview will last about 30 minutes. It can be a little bit more or less. Second rule, this interview will be distributed under a Creative Commons license. Third rule, all the questions of the interview are the same to all our partners. And the fourth rule, Actually, it's a disclosure. I am a professor. I am not a professional reporter. So this is a limitation of our interview. Professor Good. David, I will start with our questions. Okay. Let's do. Thank you. First question. What is the oldest course offered by Ely State University and when it was founded? Yeah, it is an easy question, actually, because... The, it is a very young university. It is the youngest state university in Georgia. It has been established in 2006 first, and then, well, it was shaping during the next years. But the original idea was a doing and giving our students a general education along with their speciality. And the first course and general course was a so-called introduction in the modern thinking, uh, so or contemporary thinking. And this course is provided to all our first-year students, and it includes just a group of the most important thinkers in the world. Well. I would say that first of all, those are like European thinkers, starting with the old Greeks, ancient times, Plato, and then actually including uh, important thinkers from thinkers from Italy, Germany, uh, and so on, uh, including some scientists like Charles Darwin, who was not a specifically philosopher, but I think it, I, I just share an idea that it is important for an educated person to know actually the ideas of the evolution theory and so on. And uh, uh, well, and some Georgian thinkers, but those ones mostly starting with the second half of the 19th century. And uh, yes, well, and this course is taught by different professors. Uh, from different fields, which is, I think, gives some experience to our students. That's brief answer on the on your question. Yes, it's very good. Yeah, but of course, uh, there were also specific subjects which were taught from the beginning, from the time when the university has been established. That's very good. Currently, which course 
is the most sought after by the students at the university and why? Well, this is already not so easy. And uh, it is, a, I don't know, it is a strange, or maybe for me it's strange, but the most popular course for the students in the university are psych is a course of psychology. Uh, I don't know why. Probably everybody just wants to understand better his feelings and so on. I myself was never especially interested in psychology or related actually <laughs> sciences i am not a physiologist and i'm not a psychologist but i must uh, say that in spite you know uh, in spite that the most of like a student's parents suggest them to go to some business courses or management and things like this or medicine uh, psychology remains the most uh, requested a uh, course for students which are specialized in a very different fields in both humanities and natural sciences. In Brazil, psychology also is very popular. People mm -hmm. look for this field. Good. Let's go to the third question. Which areas of research have the highest number of scientific publications at the institution and in which courses do they excel? Well, actually, this, I would say, uh, it's a field which I am more or less familiar with. And uh, traditionally, you know, in like country like Georgia and this part of the world, physics was the most well-developed field of science. And still, actually, the most important impact publications are in different fields of physics and astronomy. Uh, including particles physics, astronomy, atmospheric physics. By the way, our university is a regional leader in atmospheric physics. Uh, but uh, what uh, I uh, what must be understood very well that in a recent developments, actually the countries where science is developing better than in other parts of the world, developing quickly, like in some countries of the Eastern Europe or in some Asian countries and so on, uh, the, it is important the diversity of fields um, where people are oriented and where people publish. And I must see that there are some fields like my field, for instance, which is like a ecology and biodiversity and uh, uh, you know, animal science, plant science, uh, which was not actually such well developed in this part of the world, related, of course, with the Western countries. Uh, it is very quickly growing uh, at uh, in Georgia and in particular in Ilya State University. I can just say about like a publications in field of ecology, conservation and biodiversity and evolutionary biology, which were uh, just, you know, only a few publications were before 2010. And after 2010, uh, the explosion was uh, for uh, just causing a geometric growth, exponential growth of publications in this field. And uh, with a proud, I must say, that Ilya State University produces half of these publications, which are from the total country. That's and uh, Yes. And uh, I must say that actually also fields like psychology, like some humanities fields, you know, social sciences and so on, they are also relatively quickly growing. And uh, what is important for university in general, that uh, every, almost every year, every time, some new subfields are emerging. And of course, not just our university, but also the entire country of Georgia, which is quite small, it's like less than four millions, yes? It doesn't have a experienced and high quality expertise just, you know, uh, expertise in all fields of science, which, by the way, 
the country needs and uh, in which students are uh, interested. And in this case, we are trying to just, you know, to behave as in a sort of creativity. We support our students to contact by themselves and help them to establish contact with some foreign, our foreign colleagues or, you know, people which are experienced in a certain field of science and they can be like a co-supervisors of their undergraduate and post and graduate research and postgraduate as well. Uh, we are trying, uh, the, unfortunately, the resources are limited to invite really offline people from different countries because uh, salaries here are less than say in like a, uh, the most of the Western countries, yes. Uh, but, yeah, but however, we are enjoying some schemes like Erasmus, you know, under which the students can go outside and we are trying to select the most motivated and talented students for this. And we are trying, we, uh, I can provide you one a case study, one example which is a forestry and you know, and since 2011, we invited a under German um, support, a German scientist, a forest scientist, which uh, developed a group of young scientists from our students. And now these young scientists are teaching at our university. They are also working in different like non-governmental and governmental structures. Uh, related with uh, with forestry and forest science, and uh, actually they are now already independently publishing scientific papers, researching some factors which affect like forest growth, some forest diseases, and things like this. So it's like a, you know, it's a dynamic process. So I would say very short answer is like a physics remains strong. Uh, biodiversity ecology is fastly growing and uh, uh, diversity is increasing. This is just the three maybe uh, points. This maybe is very good. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, so it must be supported. Not just science where we have already well established results, but also some fields where we don't. We have to develop those that are emerging mm -hmm. yes so moving to question number four how many postgraduate postgraduate courses do the Ely state university offer currently and in which areas of knowledge postgraduates yes for uh, like master and doctor a master and doctor well uh master is graduate i think doctor is postgraduate but well uh i cannot i am sorry i cannot now provide the exact oh, number the most they are several, they are uh, several tens actually i think up to 100 of different okay. courses uh most of these courses are georgian speaking also also, we have some English speaking courses where we can invite also foreign students. And this is, uh, in particular, a, a, it is a program of medicine. It is a uh, just, it's not a postgraduate, but it is just a program from the beginning. But concerning postgraduates, it is a public health program, which is English speaking. Uh, it is a uh, master's in applied genetics and we uh, we don't have many foreign students there but in any group we have two three uh, students from different countries different parts of the world mostly actually those are students from like western asian countries like iran and uh, uh, arabic countries india but also they are regularly individual students, maybe from Poland and from also other uh, other countries in this uh, applied genetics. Uh, and we have an English speaking PhD program in ecology. So it is like a sort of a brand 
direction at the university and we provide a PhD program in English and it actually I think it is like um, makes sense because students from the beginning are must be used to just you know making research communicating with their colleagues in other countries publishing in international journals in impact journals which will be just cited maybe by their colleagues and uh, actually i think that the publications which students mm, produce during their phd studies maybe they are even more important than a formal phd diploma that they get in case they are successful yes and the idea of having courses in english it's quite uh, quite interesting yeah. Uh, yes, and there are also some other courses in humanities, I think in business also, uh, but they are mostly undergraduate courses. I will go to my next question. When international students wish to study in the Ely State University, what is the process from the submission of the student's uh, proposal until their arrival in the institution? Mm -hmm. Uh, good. Uh, so the university has a foreign department and one of the most important actually functions of this foreign department is uh, dealing with international students that apply to the university. And uh, it is like a normally students just write a letter or apply to the address which is given on the university's website. And then they are uh, go come into communication with the just a person which is responsible for foreign students. Normally, they uh, open a online uh, interview mm -hmm. with the leaders of this or that program where they mm, are going to just mm, to study to, to stay. Yes and uh, yes and um, uh, it is after that if their interview is successful and they got the number of points which is sufficient for affiliate for becoming a student at the university then actually the foreign department already helps them with uh, visa applications with uh, i don't know with uh, suggestions about life in georgia and prices about like housing and transportation and things like this so they can get replies on all these logistic questions uh, concerning the interview it is up to professors in a certain field uh, which kind of questions they do normally like when we are uh, questioning students which want to uh, just you know uh, to become students in applied genetics uh we are first of all asking their purposes and uh, our applied genetic uh, most of students which apply for instance in the applied genetics they are interested in medicinal program pro problems in medicinal genetics but we have to just tell them honestly that our research personnel our professors researchers and students are mostly working not on medicinal genetic problems but on like a biodiversity genetics uh, also genetics related with epidemies so which is more related to population genetics rather than like a purely medicinal and genetic technologies and we are of course uh analyzing dna we are extracting dna here making pcr getting sequences and genomes analyzing genomes so we are applying all, all these methods but one of the most important within any graduate program here is to work on somebody's master thesis or phd dissertation yes and it is important that the students understand what university can offer them. Yes. And uh, if they just are interested in a certain problem, which is not among the uh, just research subjects of the university, 
uh, well, we don't uh, prevent them, but in this case, it is already their responsibility to get funds for research or, you know, to get an expertise here yes, or other. It's normal. Yes. It's normal. Yeah. Yeah. But we have to concern our students not to just break their expe expectations after they actually become yes. students. It's, mm -hmm. it's quite normal. Moving to our next question. How are the facilities and infrastructure designed to accommodate international students? Does the university offer any type of housing or university resident for the students? And if so, what options are available? Yes, unfortunately, the university car, our, our university currently has no students like, hot, I mean, affiliation place which belongs to the university. It is in plans, it is built, but at the moment, our students are just renting house uh, in Belize. In and, Brazil, uh, it's very similar. We have, a, they call Republic, which is a house with many students. The same thing yes. ha has in Georgia? Uh, well, uh, actually our foreign departments collect some information which is available and provides the students where they can hire the place. And the uh, hiring place in Tbilisi is maybe not excessively expensive, but it's not too cheap. It is like a about, you can uh, just take one room in one of the parts of Tbilisi for about three or 400 US dollars or just in Laris something comparable with this uh well some students find cheaper places residences some more expensive and yeah it is it's a marketing decision <laughs> it's not yeah it's a it's a marketing decision so it is also uh, students can of course share rooms and yes it's like this and uh, of, of flats for the rent normally are furniture here so like different for instance in germany normally they uh, they are just empty flats for uh, for rent here they have some basic furnitures like a bed and table and things like right that. it's very good and convenient well <laughs> good Let's go to our next question. Mm -hmm. The institution is participating in the second edition of the Southern Science Conference, right. which follows a unique organizational model involving multiple universities. Mm -hmm. What benefits does the university expect to bring to, the, to its students by engaging in this international event? Well, I think that it is extremely important for students to have a broader, you know, view on the world. And uh, so far, using like European foundations and uh, like Erasmus, as I told you, and so on, even if student goes for one semester, you know, in Germany or Italy or Poland, uh, maybe it's not sufficient to really get a full-scale education, but he has an idea how the uh, teaching process is organized in these countries and uh, how is the student's life and what are requirements for individual courses and subjects which are taught there. And we have extremely poor idea about the rest of the world, you know, about in particular countries of South America where science is, yes, uh, uh, it's doing actually quite well. And uh, in especially countries like Brazil, like Argentina, like Chile, and so on, maybe in some countries better than in the others. But anyway, uh, and uh, I think that it is really very important to broaden the view on the world, to understand the world better. You know, it is like a, well, uh, like Eastern Asia also remains less understood by 
the yes. people and students here but actually i think that the uh, latin america is a sort of next step after the uh, after the europe and to less extent the united states but it is also uh, well it's very important experience i think for yes, us because uh, actually people know how things are organized here in georgia uh, they have a bit less idea how things are they have a bit less idea how things are organized in uh, european countries they have some ideas how it is in turkey for instance but uh, or in israel but uh, about like southern hemisphere it is a extremely poor knowledge and i think that it is really important to broaden this scale of understanding the world to us it's a great question. it will be not only for uh, actually for a natural sciences students but for humanities because it is a you know a huge literature which is developed in latin america in 20th century and now and i think it is important not just to read it but also to understand the country where it's done to our side it is a great pleasure to to work with you guys it's a opportunity to learn a lot and we have been growing for quite several years in contact with dr kate super mm -hmm. i will move on to our next question considering the challenges posed by the time zone differences we have experienced this one a few minutes ago oh, well yes <laughs> uh what suggestions would you would you like to give to the organizers of the event to maximize the participation of the students from the university i think that actually the uh, uh as we are contacting now yes it is now about nine o'clock right yes in nine. brazil nine o'clock for you four uh, nine thirty and here is like a four o'clock and if it is like uh, starting uh, with like four or five o'clock in the evening and uh, ending about like, I don't know, nine or ten in the evening here, uh, I think it is a very flexible time because also uh, mostly the things which people are have to be done here, it is completed and it is not yet a time to go for sleeping. So it's like... Mm, it's uh, it's just a simple time frame we cannot change the time frame in our country yes. but well it's, mm -hmm. but it's good that we can have some ideas on how to adjust ourselves it's our last question okay mm -hmm. by participating in an international event at no cost for the students the universe demonstrates its commitment in providing valuable opportunities. How do you access the importance of student participation in international events for their academic and professional development? I believe, actually, that it is much more important for students than for, for aged, you know, and well-established professors and even if there are some international conferences we always give a priority to a student if he or she can provide a talk or at least you know uh, a poster for a conference i think it is very important for them at this stage of their life to establish connections which will then during their career help them to develop to be well integrated in the international professional community you know to develop their skills to raise a joint projects uh, with uh, colleagues from different countries and so on because uh, when you know well established uh, professors are going outside it is like you know you can meet your old friends um, well you can maybe just show yourself uh, advertise and so on and so forth but I think that for students and for young scientists it is 
far more important than for like a people of my age no? my so age like, too <laughs> no you are young and i think yes for you it's <laughs> it is it's the, how can i say the it's the lighting that makes me look younger yeah well i'm like 63 so it's like uh -huh. yeah, you are a little bit more experienced <laughs> well <laughs> I don't know about experience, but concerning the uh, actually, yes, uh, I think that when I was grown, when I was a student and so on, uh, it was a Soviet Union, which was a, was a closed country. And uh, it was simply, simply impossible to go outside the country, you know, for a scientific conference and things like this. And uh, well, I started to move out in 90s uh, but uh, it were much better if i could do this when i was in my 20s the, the results are different and this is very important to be observed mm -hmm. yes so professor on behalf of my colleagues and the journals i would like to say thank you very much for your time in receiving us today I would like to say thank you for the university for this opportunity as well and to Dr. Kate that she has intermediated our conversation. It was a pleasure mm -hmm. talking to you. Thank you very much, uh, colleagues. So, and uh, well, it was a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you.